Thank you, Simon, for this very kind presentation. Do you hear me correctly? It's it's okay, wonderful. Do you see my slides? Yeah. Okay. Uh, share screen because I tested, but I probably I was replaced. Yes, allow. Now you should see my screen. Okay, please remain there because you are the only person that I see. So do not <laughs> do not disappear, please, because it's strange to uh, have a talk uh, in front of the own slides. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> thank you for being there. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I think you're the only one I see, and I had a surprise with Zoom. So now I use the web connection, web web. I mean. Uh, browser connection. So thank you also very much uh, uh, to Thorsten Hiltmann and the chair of Digital History in Berlin to give me the opportunity today to share with you some thoughts about this complex issue, which is finding a way of modeling uh, in a, an ontology, or an extension of CEDOC CRM, social life. Yes, which is a huge task that involves at least three domains or three kinds of researchers. The one is historians as ourselves and other practitioners of this kind of science that we practice. The other uh, domain of scholarship is ontologies, professors of semantics, engineering, and all these kind of very specialized and quite philosophical things. And the third one is the whole bunch of researchers in social sciences, yes? Social psychologists, social philosophers, sociologists, and so on. They also have a quite uh, interesting idea or many ideas about what social life is. So if you want to propose a model of social life, you need to be the, get acquainted with all these domains. And as uh, Simon Donig was kindly saying, I know a little bit what historical research is. And I have also some opportunity, had some opportunities to have some knowledge also in aspects of social scientists, science that are interesting for myself because I'm interested in the functioning of the social space in the intellectual domain and so on and so forth. But remains a big issue of the ontologies. So um, I will present today something, a project that I'm working on with George Brusecker, that you probably also know, who is the leader of the company Taking Solution, an expert in CDOC CRM, works uh, since a couple of years in, I mean, as a leading position in the CDOC CRM special interest group. I will present a work that we do together. But of course, from my perspective, so what I say will not engage George, but just myself. So if you find it not so well thought, it's my fault. Now, what is social life? We, uh, of course, know plenty of examples because we live in social life. And as uh, John Searle, the philosopher that I love so much, says, we... Uh, the, in the day when we come to the office, we had already plenty of examples of uh, social life aspects from driving our own car and uh, um, greeting our own wife uh, and all the rest. But here are three examples. In order to distinguish between things that are there and social life as an interpretation of these things. One interesting example is a boulder stone. Yes, a boulder stone is just a stone. Now think uh, always, this is a classical example that you, we use. Think uh, to your dog, and when the dog sees this, uh, what you see, he will see a stone, he will see a grass, he will see nature. Yes, but we see much more. We see symbols. We see the notion of border, because this is the border between two voivodships in Poland. This comes from the Middle Ages. Uh, so there is a relationship apparently in the border between the ecclesiastical earlier one and the modern one. We see a symbol, an Episcopal crozier, and we know that a bishop has this kind of symbol. So our mind is full of this social world, although we just see in a way physical world here. So we see there's a big difference. Then here also, in this case, this is about social roles. 
basically we are as some think or say and, and sometimes say uh, developed apes yes we are as humans but here you see whole rituals you see the crown you see the people legitimate in investing something or putting the crown on the head of someone you see the throne you see all the people believing that it is legitimate uh, that this person is the king and probably among these assistants also people thinking he is not the legitimate king and probably they are already conspiring yes so this is social life and this is also social life you have a car race you have a social event in a way and of course the interpretation of this event by the police and by the people driving is not the same yes and the people driving find it funny and uh, the police will find it uh, something that has to be fined okay so these are three examples. I will come back to them later on. Now, everyone asks, where can I find an ontology that allows to model social life, to express concepts about social life, social roles, social uh, interpretation of events? And as we know, Generally, we start from our research project. We have our own research agenda. We are involved in our different research projects. And then we look around and uh, try to find something in this sense. And I will propose in this talk some elements that we should consider, in my opinion, in order to think together if we can find a model. And then we will make a proposition, which we also, with George, proposed to the CRM SIG, CDOC CRM SIG of having high level classes that can express the basic elements of social life. So as we know, just to remind this, an ontology is an explicit specification of a conceptualization. We conceptualize things, we share this conceptualization and then it becomes an ontology. And it's always related to a domain of interest or domain of discourse. When we say this, we say two things. The domain in the objective sense, we speak about social life and not physics. This is a question of domain in the sense of the object, more material, or uh, as Scholastic said, the material object. But there is also the formal object. I mean, the point of view, yes? And different disciplines can have different point of views on this domain, and this we call or is called in uh, semantic engineering, the domain of discourse. It is also the way of conceptualizing your domain from the point of view of a discipline. So is it possible at all to find an ontology that can be uh, in between the disciplines to model these aspects? So we know that for doing this, we need foundational ontologies because the role of foundational ontologies is to find out categories that allow to think over the domains. One which is quite well known is Dolce. And I provide in the slide some texts that you can then read if you are interested to read more about this. I will just quote a couple of sentences and words, but you have then the whole text. And for once, I decided to have longer quotations so that for once it's there. So, the colleagues that developed Dolce in the beginning of the, uh, this uh, millennium, uh, or century if you prefer, um, tell us that the foundational ontology is there to provide us with general categories and relations that can be reused among different applications about specific domains. So is in a way a higher up section level than domains but it is needed in order to bring some clarity. And secondly, the Dolce was developed using a methodology, which is called ontoclean. And ontoclean, one should know what the basic questions are there, even if not in the sense of ontoclean, but in a general sense, because this provides us with some elements that are relevant when we model an ontology. And I will shortly comment this slide because these are things that one should know when one models ontologies. Big first question, identity. identity. What makes the identity of a class? And of course, distinction between terms and classes. When you say a map, a map. What's a map 
you spend, you spend time defining a map. You could also have an information object of type map, which would be more abstract. So if the identity of the information object as such is clear for everyone, I mean, acceptable anyway, what is a map is discussed among scholars. So in an information system, it would be better to have more generic classes like information object and use control vocabularies to speak about types of these objects. This is the issue of identity because people have in the end to agree about the identity of the classes, of the instances of the classes. Then there's the issue of the unity. A crowd of humans and a group with a plan is not the same because a crowd of human, you can split, there is a sub crowd and then a sub crowd, or you can have an even huger crowd, it's just there. Probably because there is some event or some reason or even no reason that everyone is there. But a group with a plan is something different. So the unity of the group is given by the property of having a plan. And this one has to know by modeling. Then you have the issue of rigidity, which is the very funny one in the sense that Usually we model classes like student, but Ontoclean tells us that student is not rigid because this property happily, fortunately, does just last five years and not the whole life. So the whole life of the thing, you are a person. And so it's better to have the class human being or person. And then a time indexed property or quality, which is being student and also just to state it uh, so that it's more or less clear, we should distinguish when we speak about ontologies, these are the three last lines, distinguish between instances, which are entities, uh, real world entities or concepts we talk about, and classes. Because when one says ontology, there is sometimes not the same semantic content, yes? Ontology here is intended by myself as classes and properties modeling the world. Second point, as said also about identity, we should distinguish between ontologies as the model of the world and control vocabularies of terms like types and all the rest. The types and the controlled vocabularies are outside the scope the definition of each type is outside of the scope of the ontological analysis. The class, the notion of person, the notion of social role are part of the analysis. So I will focus on this. Okay, and if you're interested, you can read these lines and they tell us that the colleagues in this domain of semantic engineering consider that foundational ontologies help us to bring some clarity and some interoperability because they try to provide us with generic concepts based on philosophy generally, 2000 years philosophy, going back to Aristoteles and using these categories, philosophically grounded, you can then reach in real interoperability also in the sense of the fair principles. But you have to go this way because this ontological analysis is essential in order to go over the own conceptualization, which is totally legitimate in the own domain. But as soon as you want to have an ontology which is interoperable, you need to study or to consider these more fundamental aspects. So we find ourselves in the position of the students suddenly, because uh, I speak about myself, I'm a trained historian. And now if I want to model ontologies, I have to study once again, yes? This is, I'm sharing also in a way an experience because if you read this paper and try to figure out how it functions, you learn a lot of things that you did not know and you understand better how modeling ontologies is working. And at the end of this first part of my talk, let's mention this new uh, issue of the uh, Applied Ontology Journal which is really interesting because the title of the issue is with many papers is foundational ontologies in action. And they took five or six examples and they asked each foundational ontology, Dolce, BFO, all the rest to say how they model these aspects. 
And these are all the relevant aspects that one usually models. And I quoted two that are relevant for us in the sense of social space and the intentionality and the mind. The first one is social roles. What does it mean to be the teacher in a class? What does it mean to be student? What does it mean to be there as teacher during a given time and then not being anymore there and so on? This is the first example, social roles. And the second example that I bring here, it's a fourth case, it's some person changing the mind and walking first to the station, then changing the mind and then going back home. So we see that these basic categories that I will bring in the second and third part of my talk are also at the core of the foundational analysis by all the colleagues that in this modern world practice in the world of the foundational ontologies. When you have the foundational ontology and the analysis of uh, your domain aspect, you need to develop a domain ontology, a core domain ontology. I will spend some word about this afterwards. So you have to go down to real world to model your domain now, not just stay in the heaven of the foundational aspects, go down. And then go even more down to have extensions because you do not need just generic things. You need also more specific model with classes, properties, and so on. And there you reach the discussion with your research model. This is just how it works. Now, we can go over to Dolce and ask ourselves, how does Dolce model social life? And I mean, here are some considerations that help us understand also what comes afterwards. First of all, we have to know how Dolce functions in general. And Dolce has four basic classes. It models our way as humans to speak about the world. It does not pretend that it exists like this in the world. It's our way of humans of speaking about the world and generally considering, at least in Western culture, how we speak about things. And the first class is the endurance class, which is about entities that can be physical or abstract that are there and that you identify in their identity during their whole life, even if they change like uh, physical objects, concepts, and all the rest. These are stable and clearly identified. And the time is not there. They have an existence which can be physical or mental, but they are not directly related to time. Time comes in with the perdurance. What is time? Philosophers discuss about this. We know there is this flow of things and relationships of things. And this is what it called here the perdurant. Perdurant are moments in time where endurance are present and in relationship and in some kind of phenomenon. These are the perdurants, the moments in time. And then you have something which is absent in this way, for instance, from CDOC CRM, which is the quality. The quality, like the color, is modeled in Dolce as a feature specific of an entity. It cannot exist independently from endurance and perdurance. You can have different kinds of qualities and qualities are instantiated in relation to the entity, which is the carrier in a way. They are not independent. And the color as red or green and so on is something else. It's a region in a space, in an abstract space. So geographical place in the sense of geographical coordinates, numbers in, in, in with measurement units, colors and so on are abstracts. This exists in our definition of the spaces of the values. And they are present in the individual qualities of entities. I mentioned this because it's relevant for afterwards. And Dolce brings also social objects as non-physical objects, but does not develop uh, specifically this point, which is developed in an extension about social roles that is applied 
also in the paper that I mentioned about foundational ontologies in action. And here in this sense, you have roles as concepts that are applied at a given time to entities. So the basic consideration is that there is a kind of time index classification where you see that a concept is applied to a person. Like a person is a teacher at time one, another person is a teacher at time three, and there is a time where there's no teacher, which is time two, and there is a student at time, and so on and so forth. This is the way of modeling the example that I presented, Dolce models, social roles as classic time index classifications. For instance, the king is modeled as having the quality of king at this time. But there is more. You can also have a whole description of reality and situation related to this reality. So you have real situations, physical ones, which are the perdurance, and then you have the interpretation by the humans. You have a kind of material reality in the world, and then you have individuals, which are blue here. These are the individuals that consider this, and even collect collectives, groups or societies, these are the red points, they consider the same reality. And of course, they do not understand what they see in the same way. So the whole question is how to model this different kind of understanding things. And also appears now the relevant distinction between that we saw already in the stone, in the border stone, between this physical or biological world that is there and the social phenomena as something on top of that. We experience in our lives that there is something beyond the just physical world and that we share some classifications, for instance, of entities. We share them. We know they are classified like this. We know who is the ordinarius and who is the assistant. These are classifications, we know this, and this is a social phenomenon. So Dolce uses this situation description combination in order, that I cannot develop, develop here in all details, of course, in order to say that there is one world that is there, and then there is our classification, complex classification of this world, that is our way as humans, individuals, as society, to think about. And this explains also this Carre situation where the same event, in the sense of the material world, can be interpreted in two different ways in the context of two different descriptions. The fun for the ones and the crime for the others. So can you do the same with CEDUC CRM? We can say it's a good idea to take the CEDUC CRM as the domain ontology. Why? Because it models cultural heritage and it has some basic, very robust categories. I will not develop this now here because uh, you know already, uh, you're already acquainted. I saw also the presence, who they are, so you know already. And also uh, uh, you can find places to discover this quite easily. At the core, there are these temporal entities corresponding to the perdurance. There is the time there, the time and the projection in the physical space. And then you have the actors, be they individual or groups, and then you have the things, physical thing and objects. Okay, but where is social life there? Is there any dimension of social life? First, we have to know that the focus, the scope of the CEDUC CRM is on material reality. This is clearly restated in the introduction of the last version. For the purpose of the CEDUC CRM, the material reality is regarded as whatever has substance that can be perceived with senses or instruments. And it is constrained to space and time. So when you take these classes, it's about that. And it is added in the specification. What goes on in our minds or is produced by our minds is regarded as part of the material reality insofar as it is becomes materially evident by our utterances, behavior, and products. 
But generally, it's about cultural heritage, it's about objects, it's about physical activities, one consideration. And second consideration, let's take the example of group. Group is a bunch of persons that act collectively or in a similar way due to any form of unifying relationship. Here comes the unity criterion of Ontclean that I mentioned. There is a unifying criteria that makes it visible, the identity of this group. And then there are some events like the formation of the group or the joining that are there. Let's take joining. A person joins a group, better said an actor, because it can be individual or another group, joining. And if you take CEDOC CRM, joining, the fact of joining a group is a subclass of activity. Activity, which is everything actively done which is a class of event, subclass of event, which is a subclass of period. And this is the high level period class, which is the top level class in the domain of events. And this period has physical space. This means joining a group is the physical appearance, all the events physically present, observable in the physical world, that reflects the social phenomenon. Because when you join a group, there is something social happening. And so the question is, is it enough to capture information about, let's say, the physical appearance of the social phenomenon, or do you need something more? As you can imagine, I would not speak here if I would not consider that we need something more. Because we learned also from the foundational analysis that there is a material reality and there is the interpretation of this reality. And normally as historians, we are also interested in how different persons and groups interpret the same reality. So we need to have a specific classes and properties in order to interpret this, to store the information about how other people interpret things. So one can say we have one layer, which is material reality, then, on top of this, which is biological, sits the mental reality that is present in your mind listening to my words. And then the social reality, which is the one part of reality where we speak together and makes our network, our groups. This is, in a sense, something about material, mental and social phenomena. It's not my invention, of course. I'm eh? studying the philosophers that consider this, that you come to this vision of things. So we can say material reality can be modeled using CEDOC CRM, what we call base. Then you have mental reality and social reality that could be modeled using a CEDOC CRM extension for social life. This is the task. Okay, and then, as you probably know, there is the family of the extensions. Do you see only partly my screen? Or the whole? Only a part of the screen? Only a part, okay? Uh, because uh, this problem, otherwise I do not see you. Uh, now you see the whole. And here especially is CRM social. So please consider that at the moment, this is developed by Josh Brusecker and myself and Tanasis Velius. We are the editors. It's an ongoing discussion. As you know, these uh, classes and properties, because here is the notice explaining you, are not usable because this is just a draft version. So consider that the project is ongoing and you should not use it now because we are working on the things that I'm telling you. And we do this from different ontomy namespaces. You can give a look to them. They are in the summary of this talk. There are the links. The one coming from George Brusecker's project, the one I will present in five minutes. And then the merging of these brings to these provisional CRM social classes. So I will present him the foundational aspects of these classes to tell you 
in 10 minutes what's about. And then if you are curious, you can give a look to all the classes and properties from the different spaces. It's a whole bunch of work. And my conclusion will be, you would be very welcome to participate in this because an ontology is a shared conceptualization. So if you like philosophy, if you like philosophical discussion, sociology, all the rest, join this discussion. You are very welcome. So from my point of view, we developed in Lyon with my colleagues, starting from the Simoji experience, some aspects of this model inside what we call semantic data for humanities. And then there is the whole specialization with the different extensions that we have there. So this is my view of the thing and George has another view. And there we come to the projects, what we need. When we have all this, then we are consistent. But as I said, we are on the way to that point. Yes, we are doing this now. Okay, so now I hope you're very curious to know what categories or what basic classes we propose to model social phenomena. And they come from social sciences, social psychology from my side and social philosophy from George Grusiker's side that we have a melting pot where we put everything together. I will try to give you a glance on this complex phenomenon. The classes are very few, but as you saw, what is in the background is very developed. From social philosophy, we adopt the intentionality class. The intentionality class is the fact that our minds focus on entities surrounding us, or that in our minds help, the power of the minds to be about things, represent things. So the will of the active, the action, is just a sub-part. Intentionality intended by philosophy, philosophy, as you can read in the Stanford, this is standard philosophy. You can read the standard encyclopedia for philosophy, this standard explanation. Intentionality is the fact that our mind is about things and represent things. And this is one basic element that we use. And the other, and it's developed, and it's developed from individual to collective intentionality. Social life comes in existence when we together accept some shared intentionality, some collective intentionality. It's in your mind, it's in my mind, it's in our mind. The big philosophical discussion is where is it precisely? Just in my mind or in our mind? But this is not our problem. So we have as observed phenomenon, representations, intentional representation of things. And then we have there coming in the whole bunch of approaches with basic concepts of social psychology, social sciences, social representation. Social representations as basic concept, like matter in physics, matter light in physics. In social psychology, you have social representation. The phenomenon of people thinking something about things, thinking that this is the legitimate president and this no other one is not the legitimate president. These are social representations. How they come to be the whole theory, we do not care. There is a basic concept like matter, social representations. Social identity comes from there and so on and so forth. So we bring in social representations and collective intentionality in order to find some basic classes to talk about the world. And here I provide literature, standard literature, where you can find the definitions. We try to refer to standard literature in these domains in order to be compatible with the basic view of things that you can find there, in order to be credible. Okay, this I will not comment. So now, if you take CEDOC CRM, and as I said, there is the temporal entity, which is a moment in time, a phenomenon in time. As I said, space, the physical space, this materiality, comes in action in CEDOC CRM in the period class. So on the left, you have the physical world. And now we bring in the new class, which is purely mental, which is intention. 
And intention means, in our minds, an object is present and interpreted by ourselves with representations. And this is very general. Intention can be also changed that uh, during this time you thought this and then happens something and then you are at another place. Intention is a high level class that collects static and dynamic mental phenomena. So intention is about this brain that you saw. And from there come the institutional facts, the roles, the interpretation of the events, all the rest are institutional facts that are just present in our minds. Not, and of course, on top of the physical world. Yes, this is normal because we are not angels, so we live in matter and space. But the real phenomenon that we are interested in, in this extension, is what happens in our minds. And I can take an example by Searle about in, in this very, very interesting book that I suggest to read, which is called Making the Social World, is a synthesis of uh, the Searlean philosophy. And here in this book, he tries to explain philosophically, also in the sense of neurobiology and all these sciences that are developing now, how the mind and philosophy sits on the biological neuronal space. This is the aim of the book and also presenting the whole vision by Searle of the social intentionality, collective intentionality. And here the example is about boundaries. It's about this stone, yes? How comes this stone in existence? It is because there was some, at some moment, a so-called status function declaration that said, in the example of Searle, this line of stones is a border. And the other people, the one of the one side of the border, the other of the other side of it, accepted that this line of stones is a border. Okay, and so this status function declaration must not be a specific moment. It can be also a set of moments. Yes, it can be uh, different things. There must be some speech act or speech acts set of speech acts and other sort of representations that constitute the representing in the societies of this line of stones as being the boundary. So this phenomenon is our proposition. One should model separately from the basic physical appearance of the phenomenon. Because in many cases, we know that sub happens something in the intentional sense, but we do not know the events when it happens. So a border stone is the typical example of a social classification of the genesis of a social object, the border, the symbol, the stone, all the rest. So you see this material vitality has, is a basic layer, but on top of that, there is a, a mental and social reality. If we use this kind of approach, what are the results? The results are, that we have high level classes in, in the foundational sense in a domain ontology because the domains are social life the domain of discourse are these social sciences as i said ontologies are related to domain of discourse the domain of discourse is history social philosophy social psychology and so on so we should try to figure out to have some classes that are robust enough that can be usable for expressing things this must be tested, of course, yes, this is just a proposition. Second point, as I said, I anticipate this point, we are in line with these sciences. We try to use concepts they use every day, so in order to be understandable, not to reinvent the wheel, to go to the bibliography existing and trying to figure out how to bring it in. And also, the way we have, we proposed, it's not very visible for you, but it's quite clear. We do not distinguish if there exists really collective intentionality as such. Certainly it is present in our minds. Is it beyond? We do not know, we do not model it. We just model, there are humans, ourselves. If you want, you could also add computers, but this is not explicitly done, but could be, that have representation about objects. And this is the basic of the basis of property, social roles, because there are always people believing 
that these things exist, but they exist just in the minds, because if there are no people anymore, then no one knows what the property is. And if there are people no anymore, there is no king anymore. So these roles exist just because people believe about this. And if there is a revolution and you say the law is now a different one, then there is no king anymore for the main part of the population. And you can have another part with a different opinion about that. And so to finish, because normally if Simon agrees, I still would have five minutes uh, given that there was a short introduction. Okay. <laughs> I can show you the tree that you can find if you go to this namespace, semantic data for social sciences, for humanities and social sciences. If you go to this link, you come to onto me to, to a namespace where you will find these classes and other ones. But I will show you the whole thing from the beginning in the last five minutes, how it works. And then of course, uh, I cannot summarize in 45 minutes, uh, five years work and all what is coming also next. So let's close this. What we show here in Ontomy, it's a proposition and we make, of course, some marketing for CDOC CRM, but you could have something else, yes, because Ontomy is agnostic. Ontomy is just a tool, but it's filled now with this. So we go, if you go even without account here, you find exactly this. So you see this CRM entity and the primitive value. And if you apply Dolce, you see this is substance, this is ontological substance, the entity and primitive value are, is just a space, it's just numbers. And even more, place, dimension, uh, what are the other ones, are also abstracts in the sense of Dolce, time span, these are all abstracts. And then you have two basic entities, which are persistent item, the endurant, and temporal entity, the perdurant. And in this model, so I just go back to the thing here, uh, must be the slide 10, so that you see what I mean. I'm talking about these four high level classes, because this is the foundational analysis of the CDOC CRM, yes? CDOC CRM is a domain ontology. On top, you have a foundational ontology. So endurant is the persistent item. Perdurant is in a way the temporal entity. I propose a slightly different interpretation because here from the properties, you just have time, just time. That's the discussion. And then you have the quality I do not see it. And then you have the abstracts and the abstracts are place, dimension, space, time, volume, time span. These are abstracts in the foundational analysis. Okay, then you have the period, the activity and what I showed. This is the physical world, the, 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 the physical, uh, the approach, the basic approach of CDOC CRM in the sense of event centered. Here is from period downwards, always physical space coming. Because the property comes and it's inherited all the long. There is no event in the CDOC CRM which is not physical. It's the ontology like this. I propose to add a quality class. And this quality class is this one. And it can be different, yes? It can be different if it's the temporal entity which has this quality or if it's a physical thing that has the quality. But basically there is a quality which is an intrinsic property of the object and does not exist without, okay? And then if you go down, what is this? Here comes the intention. There are other things, but they are not relevant today because this semantic data for humanities bring also other things. But here is the intention. And so you see the intention is a quality. A quality of what? Of our minds. So the intention associates an intentional entity 
you can give a look at that. The intention associates an intentional entity, intentional entity, with the propositional object that is concerned. And CDOCRM has propositional objects, and propositional object can be used as representations. The representations that we have are these propositional objects. And they are about, this is already in the CDOCRM, they are about entities, is about entity. So this aboutness of the intention, the aboutness is there, is in the propositional object. And we just have to add the moment in time when you hold it, I'm finished, yes, I'm finished. And here you have the intentional events and the state of mind. These are the two basic subclasses of intention. Here is the belief, the static aspect. You believe that this person is a king. And here is the change of mind. You stop believing that because often we know that there was a change in mind and we would like to capture this but we have no idea in which physical event it was present. We have no idea, but we know. We have the information that person A went from opinion Y to opinion Z. So this you can store with this and state of mind is all the rest. Here comes the whole, sorry, here comes the whole world with the classification of things, with the legal qualities of things, with the fact that persons are legally called like this during a given, all the classes that we need with sub extensions. So here we are at the level going down, it's another namespace. Here you can bring in your project ontology. Yes, in this scheme, this level. So there is the foundational one that you do not generally use intention and this this is missing this is what we feel this space there with this intentional space and then downward are the things we use normally when we model data that uh, uh, there is a, <clears throat> a law that is valid that there is some right that is foreseen by this law and so on and so forth and everything is based in this concept of intentionality, individual and collective. Thank you for coming along with this long walk in philosophy and other domains. <laughs>